for another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. So if you remember back to last year, um, we grew some of these which are basically birdhouse gourds and as you can see this is now dried and it's um, sort of quite hollow, it doesn't weigh um, sort of very much at all so I know now that this is dry. You can actually make maracas out of these but the, for some reason the seeds have not released into this. But anyway what I'm going to be doing um, in this um, sort of few clips is just making a, um, a birdhouse out of this. Now I know I'm a little bit late this year um, for a birdhouse, what I'm going to do is make it now and then what I can do is put it up very early next spring and um, it'll be ready for the sort of birds next year. Now, when you're making a, um, a birdhouse, the, the size of the hole that you make to enter and, and you, um, the, uh, the birdhouse is, is quite critical to the type of birds you're going to attract. Now, I'm, I'm going to make this so I can attract sort of, um, sort of tits or sparrows, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, sort of that size of bird, obviously because of the size of this. Um, now, for a bird of that size, it's best to look on the internet, just look for um, bird house um, hole size and then it'll tell you the different um, types. Now for a, a sparrow you need 38 mil holes, so just, just basically just over, um, you know, sort of an inch and a half or so. So I'm going to be cutting a, a hole in there for big enough. Um, for a, If you want to attract um, sort of blue tits and stuff like that, you need a slightly smaller um, hole and obviously if you if you want to attract wrens or anything like that you need a, um, a, a hole more like an inch or something like that like more like 24 mil so um, but I'm going to be making this to attract sparrows so um, I think that's just about big enough for a, um, a sort of sparrow and a nest to get into so I'm going to be cutting a hole in there and then basically what I'm going to be doing is making like a metal sort of circle to go around the bottom of it um, and then I'm going to be sort of making a sort of short pole about I don't know about eight or nine inches long and then putting a bolt through the bottom to hold it all, all all together and then there'll be like a bit of a sort of stick coming out so the birds can land and get in and out and then I'm going to actually be mounting this on the end of the greenhouse um, next year so it'll be basically above where the camera is now. Um, now because whilst it was dry and there was various um, I don't know sort of obviously because it was wet and it was drying in the uh, the greenhouse so it's it's sort of left all of these sort of muffled marks on the outside of it, but uh, which, which is quite interesting. However, it, you know, I mean, what you could do is basically just varnish this, just to protect it. But what I'm going to do is actually paint it, you know, so it's nice and bright, and uh, so it looks nice. So what I'll be doing is drilling a hole, making a metal frame for this, um, and then a bracket to put it onto the greenhouse at the top, so no cats can get up there, basically. And then um, obviously cutting a hole and making a little thing. I might even make a little sort of sort of roof over the door to stop any water going inside and then I'll be drilling a hole in the bottom of it as well to put the bolt through so it'll all attach onto each other and it'll hold itself stationary and then I'll be painting that so I'll be showing you that in the next few clips. Okay so the birdhouse gourd is made up of three separate parts really so you've got the main um, the sort of the gourd and as you can see here I've painted it but and this is going to be painted up with gloss paint so it'll look nice when it's finished and then we've got this section here which is made up of two hoops and that's um, basically to support the weight of the, uh, the gourd even though it's not particularly heavy but it's just to sort of um, sort of hold it together and uh, make sure that there's no strain because I'm basically connecting to it through one single bolt there even though there's a washer on the inside you know you don't want to be putting too much stress on the on the structure of the gourd you know you want it to be nice and stable and then there's this final part here which um, attaches into the greenhouse um, now obviously depending on where you're going to um, mount it, you know, if you're going to put it on the top of a pole or even if you're going to hang it in a tree or whatever, you know, you may not need um, this pole here. But what is important is you've got somewhere for the, uh, the birds to land before they go inside the, uh, so in the gourd. So, so what I'm going to show you now is how to make sort of these bits here, if you like, and I'm also um, just going to show you how that bit 
fits into the greenhouse just in case your greenhouse um, is the same that you'll be able to see how to do it. So just so you can see the um, construction close up, so this, this bottom part here, I've got two pipes, two millimetres gap between them, welded together at the bottom onto this um, sort of nine mil pipe here. And that nine mil pipe goes up to the top. I've drilled down inside that um, to about there with a six mil drill so it'll accept the bolt. And then all I've done is basically welded a sort of nut on the top there and all I did with that was basically run the nut onto a bolt, put the bolt down inside the pipe so I know it's all aligned and then just weld it around then I've just ground that um, flush. Um, and then I've also got the uh, the nut at the bottom and then I've got the, the two hoops constructed together, welded together and then this place underneath to support the whole thing. Okay so if you look at the end form of the greenhouse we've got these two sort of holes here and this is actually what the um, the opening window is actually attached into. What I'm going to do is utilise that shape there and all, I've, all I'm basically um, doing is I've made two pipes as you can see here. Um, so the two pipes are, they're, they're effectively two millimetres apart and what I've done, let's see if I can just grab hold of it uh, what I've done is basically made that so it fits inside those two. So there's no bolts actually attaching this to the greenhouse. Um, the, uh, those two parts basically slide in there. And then if I push that in, because it's a sort of friction fit, that'll actually slot inside those two grooves along there. Obviously what I've had to do is get, um, get the pipe that actually perfectly fits that hole, obviously, because I don't want to sort of force any... Um, the aluminium apart or anything like that and then without having to bolt anything to the greenhouse that will fit in there quite nicely it's actually going to end up on the other end of the greenhouse but uh, obviously I'm just trying it out at the moment Okay so as it was brought up the other day I'm just um, just clearing off the drill I'm about to drill the hole through the uh, the bird the, the birdhouse gourd and all I've got in here is just a, uh, a magnet in a, in a plastic bag and I'm just clearing up the, the sort of the swarf off the off the drill so as you can see there I've got by far the majority of it up and then all you do is just turn the bag inside out on itself like that so you can take your, your magnet away then and um, what you're left with is all of the sort of the nasty bits of swarf and everything inside the bag then you can just tie that up and throw it away so that was just a that was just a quick tip so basically I've, I've um, painted the uh, the gourd as you can see. I've just made a little bit of a um, I've just used a little bracket just to hold it up whilst it was drying last night. But I've given it a quick coat of um, primer as you can see. I've missed a little bit there, but this isn't the first coat. It's, uh, the last coat it's going to have. So what I'm going to do now is drill a hole um, in there. Now, dependent on the type of bird, as I've already said, um, you know you can um, you can attract different types of birds. So what I would suggest you do is select the side that you're going to drill the hole, and I'm going to drill it sort of in there. So this bit kind of slopes away from it. And uh, if you want to attract um, blue coal marsh tits, what you need to do is drill a 25 millimeter diameter hole. If you want to, um, if you want to um, attract great tits, tree sparrows, um, or sort of fly catches, etc., um, you need a 28 mil hole. If you want to attract um, sort of house sparrows um, and, and and sort of things like that, you need to have um, sort of 32 mil hole and then there's other sort of like if, if you want a starling obviously this is not big enough for a starling but then you'd need a sort of 45 mil hole so just to remind you I'll put them on the screen um, in a few moments so you can um, so you can write down the size that you want but obviously this is about the right kind of size for a sparrow um, or a robin so uh, what I'm going to be doing is drilling a 32 mil hole um, sort of through here so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, drill a um, the sort of pilot hole and this is just a 6 mil drill that I've got in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just basically I'm, I'm going to put it on a piece of wood. Um, I'm just going to take that bracket off the top. Uh, and I'm just going to drill a hole in, in, in the side where I want it. Now I want the hole to be sort of around that sort of area. So what I'm going to quickly do is just get a pencil and just sort of eye it up and see where I think the hole needs to the whole centre needs to be something like there. It's always worthwhile marking it off. Just have a quick look. In fact, to be honest with you, I'm going to move it slightly over. So I'm going to have it about sort of there. Then that will make the hole, um, the, the, you know, sort of the aperture for the bird to get in and out there, which will leave it some room at the bottom to build its nest, so you can get in and out. Um, and 
it'll give it enough sort of headroom so we can get it in and out. So what I'm going to do is just just quickly drill a pilot hole through here. As I say, you know, the walls are quite thin and it's effectively like wood, so you know you need a reasonably sharp drill. And uh, it's not particularly thick, so there's the there's the pilot hole. We'll drill through. As you can see I've um, drilled through the uh, what's now now what I'm going to do is use a, um, a hole cutter. Now, I would most certainly suggest that you use one of these. I wouldn't uh, try and cut it out with a sort of jigsaw or anything like that. You basically need a, a hole cutter. Now, I've um, I've had my hole cutters for oh many a year. I can't get this chuck open there. Um, there you go. Um, so you know these things, and they're not particularly expensive. I bought a set of them. Uh, from a plumbing shop and you know and you get various sort of sizes you know that's sort of up to I don't know what size that is uh, 64 mil and then they go all the way down to you know you've got various sort of sizes and it goes all the way down to something about that kind of that big but as I say you know what we're going to drill here is the 32 mil hole so I'm just going to align that in the chuck now the reason for um, drilling the pilot hole first is so you most certainly get the right position. So hopefully I can uh, drill straight through that. So as I say I've got this on a piece of wood, I don't know if you've noticed that. I don't want to sort of make any marks on the back of this. So I'll, I'll just go through and drill this hole. Okay, so the hole's actually gone through and there's some sort of, um, obviously where the seeds are on the inside, so I'm just going to pull out the bit that I've sort of drilled off. And as you can see inside there is all the, um, the seeds and that, so as you can see there's a there's one of the seeds. So what I'll do now is just quickly sort of go around with my finger inside and pull out all of the seeds and stuff, and then I'll um, show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got all of the, um, the stuff from inside there. And uh, it's it's kind of a little bit like, uh, to be honest with you, it reminds me of like a hornet's nest. It's kind of sort of I don't know. It's got like a papery cardboardy type um, sort of feel to it. And inside there are all of the um, the seeds. So what I might do is um, I'm going to save some of these seeds. And I'm actually going to put a few in the greenhouse now um, to see if I can. Uh, I, I know I'm late growing them, but uh, I might be able to grow another one this year. So. That's the um, that's the gourd of the hole in. What I've done is I've stuck a screwdriver in, um, sort of like this, and I've just sort of gone round inside and just loosened up all the little bits, and then sort of pulled them out and just shook it out and got all the sort of bits of debris out. Now, what I'm going to do now is make like a metal ring to go around here just to support it, and I also need to drill a hole in the middle of there so I can. Um, Put the, put, basically put like a shaft on it at the bottom there to support it. So what I'll do now is I'll just make the the, the metal ring there and I'll show you what that, what that looks like. Okay so what I've got here is um, a bit of um, pipe, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's it's quite thick wall so I'm able to um, tap it. Now basically what I need to do is make a ring to go around the bottom of here just to support it. And uh, what I've got here is just a piece of round um, sort of two inch bar which I've got in the vise, nice and tight. And what I'm going to do is basically just tap now, I'm going to tap this into a circle basically, so I'm doing this kind of freehand, so what you need to do is always make sure at the end the, um, that, that the end is bent over, because that's always the hardest bit to get right, so I'm just sort of getting that right, and then basically just tapping it, tapping it round, see I'm starting to form the, um, the circle. And before I go any further I'm just going to waffle that up and see how I'm getting on just to make sure the radius is something like. If anything that's slightly, um, slightly too tight so I'm just going to tap it back a little bit. And then I'm going to continue round. Try and don't try and cut the size um, that you need. Basically, what I would do is, is use the length of it, and then as, as soon as you've got it all wrapped all the way around, then you can um, then you can sort of 
cut it to size after that. And to be honest with you, I can actually bend this quite easily with my hand. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just bending it round into a, a circle. I can always tap it into shape afterwards. Obviously, depending on the material that you use, you might want to um, either tap it or sort of knock it in, depending on what to use for you. So that's sort of roughly a circle, very roughly. Um, and I'm just going to sort of offer that up, and that's going to sit at the bottom. So I know that's about right. So all I need to do now is uh, sort of tap that so it's um, you know sort of perfectly circular, and then cut the end. And so what I'll do is, as soon as I've got all of that tap perfectly into shape and um, I've got rid of this sort of little oldies bit here um, I'll show you what it looks like okay so there's the ring and as you can see I've welded the uh, the part I know it's not a perfect ring but we are dealing with an imperfect shape here so as you can see that sort of quite nicely sits on the bottom of the um, sits on the bottom of the gourd so what I'm going to do now is uh, make a second ring here which is going to stick out, which is going to be something for the bird to land on. So in exactly the same way, what I'm going to do is bend up, um, bend up a bit of pie, uh, just like just like I've done that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is um, basically make like a. Imagine there's a hoop. I'm going to make a second hoop, sort of like that, and that's going to form the um, sort of if you like like that, and then that's going to form the, um, the sort of the landing pad for the bird to sort of land, so it can get through the uh, the front door. Okay, so now I've um, formed the sort of the second hoop. So if you imagine, that's going to sort of go on, sort of like that. Yeah, you can see that. And then basically the gourds are going to sit in there like that, and then that's going to provide like a little place for the bird to land, so we can actually get in and out of the nest. So what I'm going to do now is just just um, do the final adjustments to that, and then I'm going to weld that on, kind of like that. If you look at it from the side. So it's up slightly at an angle, about sort of, I don't know, about 30 degrees or so. And um, I'm just going to weld that in them two places, then I'll show you when it's finished. Okay, so now I've welded on the uh, the bottom, I don't know if you can see that there and there. I haven't, I've only just sort of cleaned up that weld there a little teeny bit, just to make sure that this sits on it. So that's going to sit kind of like that. As you can see, that's where the, hopefully the bird's going to come and land on here. And then it can jump into the, jump into the nest sort of thing. So all I need to do now, basically, is um, attach this metal structure to the gourd, and I'm going to do that through the centre. So if you look at it from the kind of the bottom there, there's obviously the centre of the gourd. So what I'm going to do is put a bolt through the bottom there. So I just need a, um, a small plate running in to there, so it can bolt on, and then from there it'll go down. Um, you know the the, the 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 sort of the the pole in which it's going to sit on. So I'll just make that now, and I'll show you when I've got that done. Okay, so there's the um, the finished sort of bit that's going to go onto the gourd. As you can see, there's the uh, the hoop that's, that the bird's going to land on, and then this strip here is going to bolt into the middle. That's um, sort of four mil steel that I've used there. Um, it's all this is all stainless steel, and this is um, galvanised mild steel, um, and then that's the hoop. So the actual gourd is going to sit sort of in there, and as you can see, that hole there lines with the, basically the base where the flower used to be. On the gourd, and then so the actual thing will look kind of like that. Uh, now, the only way, in all honesty, the only way that you can align things like this, I mean, you know, it's obviously in a regular shape, is basically just to sort of hold it all together on the gourd, which is how I've just welded it like that. And then I've just tacked, tacked the top of that, and then took that off, and then finished off the weld there. I've also welded it on the inside just in case. Um, the weld on the outside didn't take, but it's, it, it is really solid there is, and that's why it looks kind of irregular. But uh, all I need to do now is drill a hole in the bottom, and then bolt that on there. Then that will be the gourd part. The rest of it is just the uh, the pole. Now I must admit the next bit is quite tricky. But what you need to do is I've got a um, bolt like that, and what I've done is I've just hold it with a pair of pliers like that, and then you put it into the into the hole of the gourd. And then push it through the uh, the hole in the bottom, so you've then got a, a bolt sticking out the bottom. Now I've not taken this out again because it's it's a little bit faffy to get it in there, but um, I've um, basically I didn't want to take it back out because I wasn't sure if I was going to get it back in again or not. So all I'm going to do now is just add another washer um, to the bottom of here. 
Oh, that's no, these, this is a, an M6 um, bolt that I'm using. Then I'm just going to run a nut on there um, to work uh, to hold it all in. And I'll just get a 30mm spanner. So then I'm just going to, no it's not twelve. Eleven. So I'm just going to tighten that up like that and then there's the, there's the finished gourd with the, uh, the little sort of landing bit at the back and that's all bolted in nice and firm so the bird will be able to hold onto that and that's supporting the, the gourd all the way around the back there which is obviously where the weight's going to be. So that's nice and sturdy in there. So what I'm going to do now is um, make the make the pole, and then at the top of the pole, I'm just going to um, bolt it, um, weld in a, another M6 nut. And then that will basically just spin down onto the top of the um, onto the top of the pole, and that'll, that's basically all of the mechanical bits of the um, the birdhouse sort of finished. Now, um, obviously, the bit that goes on here will depend on what you're sort of attaching it to. Um, now, I'm going to put this on the greener, so. Um, I shan't show you me breaking that bracket because obviously it's going to be different for everybody but uh, that's going to kind of sit like that. What I'm going to do now is take this off and um, paint it all up nice and obviously I'll paint up this bit here as well so that will all sit in there. There's a little bit of straightening that needs to be done um, just to get that um, just sitting quite right so I'm just going to gently tap that with a hammer to get it right but uh, that's basically how you make the, the landing bit for the for the, uh, the gourd. Okay so there's the birdhouse gourd in, in position as you can see it's attached to the, the roof and it goes along this form here um, and so what I'll be doing in the week is just painting that up so it's uh, watertight, give it another couple of coats of um, primer and then I'll be uh, painting it all up and I'll show you what it looks like next week. Okay, so this is the um, this is where the arrow um, parsnips were, were basically planted, and this part of the row here hasn't done very well. So what I'm doing is just loosening up the soil, and uh, what I'm going to do is at the parsnip propagator, I've still got a few parsnips left, so I'll be able to put these in. So there's the there's the actual parsnip inside the uh, the tube. So what I'm going to do is basically dig dig a hole. I've loosened up the soil so it can get its uh, get its root down. Like that. Nice, nice deep hole and obviously the, the ground at the bottom underneath, I know you can't see it from the camera but I'm going down about 18 inches or so so the ground's nice and loose. And then all I'm going to do is basically unwrap um, the plastic like that and as you can see that's the that's the parsnip and all of its and all of its roots ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is just basically put that into the put that into the row and knock back the soil like that and just just firm it in. And what I'll be doing now is uh, just filling out. I'll put another couple here and then just behind the camera there, there's uh, room for a couple more. So that'll be the rest of the parsnips out the propagator. And if you haven't seen this before, all these are is just rolls of. Um, this is made out of a Coca-Cola bottle, you know, the pot bottle, well anything really, but that's the middle section of the, the bottle. And then I've made a contraption that looks kind of a bit like this, I don't know if you can see it. But basically these fit inside like that. And then I plant the parsnips in as you can see. Um, and then all I do is just pull that fat bit out. And then if I unravel that, then the parsnips will come out in one go. And then I don't disturb the roots and I can put them in. Into the, into the rows where they fell. So I'll just continue to put in um, another two here. Planting them about sort of nine inches apart. Obviously getting the ground nice and loose. Um, and I'll show you when I've finished. Okay, so that's all of the parsnips in. Um, so these are the ones that I've put in today. So basically what I'm going to do now is just give them a bit of, a bit of water just to start them off. Possibly even better for the rows to be honest with you. But to, I was giving these a bit of water, now what I'll do is I'll keep these watered uh, for the next few weeks anyway um, and then uh, as soon as we've got themselves established um, parsnips, you want parsnips to sort of search for the water, you want them to grow downwards so um, it's not 
you know, if you want short fat parsnips, then keep them watered. But if you want, um, if you want the, uh, you know, if you want the parsnips to be long and thin, uh, then don't give them too much water, so that they they send the main tapping root downward to uh, um, find the water. So they're long and thin. If you don't water them too much, or if you do water them, you'll end up with sort of shorter fat ones. Okay, so that's the parsnips in. Uh, there are a few spaces there, but uh, I'll have to run with that for the next. I don't have any more parsnips, but uh, that's the parsnips in for the chef. Okay, so in the interest of time, I know there's a few weeds knocking about, but I've uh, I've just gone through all of them with the um, with the hoe, and I've just just sort of knocked them down as best I can. So what I'm going to be doing is planting the. Um, <clears throat> this Nero kale, which is the second batch that went in, I've got uh, the six plants there, and there's also um, some on the outside there. So what I'm going to be doing is sort of planting them along here, um, and then to the um, to the back there. So I'll, I'll just get on with that now. I know a lot of you've been putting comments on the channel. I mean, the the weeds that we've had this year have been absolutely incredible, and uh, I've never known weeds like this. But uh, what I've basically done is just gone around, as I say, with the uh, with the hoe and just quickly taking them down then I'll, I'll be pulling any more out that I see uh, nearby these newer plants but um, these are the uh, just quickly get this out so there you go the roots are roots are well formed and I'm basically planting these and then obviously with any brassicas uh, remove any leaves that are sort of slightly damaged from the outside really these should have gone in perhaps a week or so ago but uh, as I say times are a premium at the minute but um, all I'm going to do is basically just go through take out whatever weed I can and um, as and when I've got a bit more time, I'll uh, I'll come back and properly tidy up the weeds. But uh, I've just gone over with the hoe for now. And as I say, I'm, I'm sort of into planting these with the others along here. Then I'll continue the row. Um, so these these plants are actually um, sort of going in um, around sort of 18 inches or so apart. And I find that if you do that, you can plant them further apart if you wish. But um, as I, I find with brassicas. That if you plant them around that sort of distance apart, then the uh, they tend to um, sort of support each other a little bit. If you're in a windy area like I am, so as I say, the, the ground's reasonably hard. But you want for brassicas, you want the ground to be hard. Um, I, I dug this over um, at the beginning of the year and I rotivated it twice to break it all down. And now, um, as soon as I sort of rotivated, sort of dug it over. The second time I walked all over it and compacted the ground down and then uh, the uh, the ground's reasonably hard which is basically what you want for brassicas so uh, right so I've, I've got out as many weeds as I can I'll just continue to um, plant along this row here and I'll show you when it's finished okay so that's all of them in I'm just um, obviously giving them a bit of water just to get them the uh, Started. The end ones I've had to put slightly closer together. I've had a few more plants than I needed really, but uh, um, I thought I may as well put them in and uh, see how they go. But um, what you can do with, um, well, both types of kale, in fact, is uh, you can um, you can cut the leaves when they're reasonably young to actually use them as a salad. So you know you don't have to use them as a sort of vegetable that you boil as such. So even this. Sort of curly kale here. You can uh, you can actually cut that when it's a um, sort of young leaf and use that as a salad. And also, also the Nero kale. You can cut the more tender leaves from the centre and uh, just put that straight into the sandwich as a salad. So that's the uh, that's the kale. And as I say, I'll tidy up the rest of the weeds when I get five minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to crop the first bit of um, curly kale this year. And what I basically do is basically get one of the the larger sort of outside leaves down to the down to the plant and push it downward. And then that'll break off sort of quite cleanly. Take the stalk as well, because what you don't want is sort of decaying matter on the plant, because obviously that won't grow any further. So I'm just sort of taking one or two leaves off from around each of the um, um, plants, and then basically I'll just keep on picking at the outside, and then you'll find that the, you know, that the that the kale will last a lot longer that way. And also, you know, because you're taking the outer leaves, um, you know, you're leaving the heart of the plant to grow on a bit further. And what I what I typically do is just sort of go up the row, or the or the the the, uh, the couple of rows that we've got here, taking off sort of one outer leaf from each plant. Try and pick the largest one, because what you want to do with this type of kale anyway, 
particularly if you've got the purple variety, is you want to pick the leaves when they're reasonably young because kale can go, can sort of go a little bit tough when it gets um, a little bit advanced. So when the leaves are kind of kind of that big, you know, so sort of the size of your hand, that's really the best time to um, to pick them. Obviously, you know, you can go for the younger leaves, but um, what I would suggest you do is as soon as they get to kind of the size of your hand, um, you know, sort of sort of four or five inches across, then uh, kind of like that, then that um, that's more than enough. I think probably for us now. To, oh, it, let's have a look. Yeah, I think I'll just take another couple of leaves. Um, and what I do is look for the plants with the largest leaves and pick those first. Then you're almost guaranteed then to have, um, you know, a nice steady, nice steady supply of uh, leaves that you know that haven't gone tough, and um, you know the nice and succulent. So anyway, there's the first pickings of um, kale for this year, or at least the curly kale. So I hope this episode of Jim's Lot Gone has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'd just like to say a big thank you to all the support you give me on the channel and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lot Gone.